Greetings, as I, Tantus Nairvandrakul, your lord and emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and welcome once more. I hope everybody's having a great day today. It's ready to dive back into Galarian, the Pathfinder role-playing game's setting. We're going to be talking about another ancestry today, but an interesting one because it's always been kind of a monster, but it's also an ancestry, but since the remastered slash core project, we don't really know much if there's been major changes to the ancestry, as there really hasn't been major changes to the monster, per se. It's in a weird spot here, but because the update's really on the monster side and how that reflects on the ancestry side is just questionable, I kind of wanted to talk about it. What is this we're talking about? Sprites. Yes, we're talking about the tiny fey sprites. And I'm going to go about it as the ancestry direction today, not the monster direction, but we'll use some details from the monster because it's important. But where do I learn about sprites? Where do I know about playing sprites and them as a creature and a monster and all that stuff? That's a really good question, especially stats for playing them, etc. Stats for fighting them if you're the one too also. I don't know if you fight them, maybe just deal with them as a uh, hazard. Anyway, Bestiary. Bestiary 3 um, has a good number of the current sprites you'd be looking forward to. Uh, it expanded on the uh, Fey a lot, so I'd recommend that one. The Ancestry Guides from 2nd Edition, which introduced Sprite as a playable creature. And of course, the Monster Core for the monster side of things I talked about. Yeah. So, why don't we start the very basics of what are Sprite? They're Fey. They're from the First World. So, yes, they are tiny little creatures from the Fey realms. That's the basis way to think about them. They're diminutive, whimsical, exuberant creatures. They love pranks, new things, and embracing magic. This is the quintessential type of creature when people think fed. Little spirits that float around and do things. And the majority of these creatures remain in the first world, where they are effectively immortal. They do reincarnate into new forms of fey when their lives eventually come to end. Some meld together to form more substantial bodies, split apart to make smaller fey. It's sort of that higher thing is when they would die, they change instead into something new which might be connected to their old, but yes. There are a curious people, though, and they're curious about all forms of magic. So that includes going to places like the mortal world to explore new possibilities of magic and to explore things like the static nature of mortal existence. Yeah. These creatures mix in with other smaller groups of material plane comrades, exiles from the first floor uh, world, those whose families swore packs to mortals, or even those contemptible individuals curious to enter the mortal cycle of souls. So that's where the kind of you get groups of these going to the material plane for different reasons. The first generations of sprites were content to guard magical locations, learn music, play pranks in the unsuspecting, Panic struck, though, with them when the children that they had in the mortal world didn't form wings until adulthood. Some trans uh, transitioning to the mortal world likewise lost their wings after time. They believe this a sign that the mortal wing world was too alien for them, and so many initial explorers returned to the first world. However, these wingless children exhibited unmatched potential um, by many and particularly magical affinity for the mortal world. They were very in depth with the magic of the mortal world. And they would become the mightiest of heroes of the sprite people. And sometimes the most dangerous of villains, too. As they came close to reaching that full level of strength, many grew wings. Larger, more unique, more vibrant than those seen in the first form, or the first world. A sign of potential. So it's sort of like, rather than just being born with the wings, they had to earn their wings. So this is an idea of sprites and entering into the world, as it is. 
I will say there, the, you know, we don't get a lot of the history or updates deep within the Monster Core stuff or sprites. So this is where we mostly get this kind of stuff here. Now let's talk about sprites. Sprites take a lot of forms. Is one of those things about sprites is they, for one thing. Your average one is a very tiny, kind of fairy-like creature. And they vary based on the heritage, the type of sprite they are. There are many types of sprites which we will talk about for the end of the day, which makes a difference. Your average one rarely grows taller than 9 inches, weighs about 2 pounds. Some will mimic other forms of nature, insects, bats, or dragons. Some are magically luminescence. Some are unusually large. There may be something called a pixie, which is a type of sprite, but larger. The wingless, of course, those that potential becoming heroes and villains, including basically all the PC types of sprites, will go their wings as their magical potential manifests, um, and some never grow them at all. Some, with humbler destinies, grow wings when they reach adulthood and master their innate magic. Usually sprites reach adulthood at the same time as humans do. But a typical fae can, who can manage to stay out of mischief and danger could live maybe a thousand years or more. Material brain sprites who tend to see their time coming to an end will usually try to return to the first world, first world to be reborn and start their adventure all over again. If they can return to the first world, they can, re not, they can restart their reincarnation cycle that they have. When you do find them in places, they tend to have tiny reclusive villages with magic, natural beauty, interests. Uh, some do live as loners, maybe just a small family, peer groups. Some travel across the land for excitement. Basically, where there's magic, there's nature, you can usually find sprites. Though, again, they do like protecting these things, but not all recipients of protection want or need it. And, yeah... And some of those curiosities of magic, some sprites, types of sprites, will become familiars to spellcasters because of the interest in magic that they have. Mm. And if you talk to first world sprites, basically, uh, fey, fey world sprites, well, they can be a little more distrustful of all other creatures, including other fey, though, if you're talking sprite versus a group of sprites versus another. Sprites from anywhere will band together if they're being kind of bothered by someone else. So, yeah, you know, you're not from the first world. You're a material plane sprite. You're coming in here, visiting them. They're going to be a little cautious regarding even like other fae, other sprites. But as soon as someone bothers with you, you're with us. Sprite protects sprite. That is a weird way of saying that. Uh, <laughs> that was a very weird way of saying that. Now, they do have some religious beliefs. Most worship the eldest, which of course is very much related to the fey deities, rather than those of the mortal world. If they have particular affinity, uh, Shaika, the many-formed eldest of time, or the Lantern King, the trickster among the ranks, um, there's more specific ones. If you go to mortal deities, Desna is, for the most part, uh, basically due, due to her depiction of a butterfly-winged woman, seen very wild. And many Desna sprites claim her as one of their own, basically saying that she, like, you know, transcended Feigood to be a mortal god or something. Maybe she was a, a, a material-playing sprite who found godhood. Um, sprites rarely comprehend the doctrines uh, uh, readily comprehend the doctrines of Cain and Kalian and Shellen, and the goddess of beauty and art is particularly among favorite among Grigs. Keep that in mind, too. Alright. So on Galarian, basically, because of that love of magic, they've traveled out into the universe as a whole to explore art, music, pranks, magic, nature, and yes, the lack of wings, the change has happened to plenty of them. And it's not just in Galarian. Galarian is the one that you point out as a 
pole because of the material plane, but really a sprite that is anywhere out in the universe for a long period of time and outside of the first world where they are natural to will find the changes of wings. And that curiosity has some try to enter the cycle of souls that mortals do. Sprites do have a connection to dogs, too, especially corgis, as some of them will have corgis as mounts. And a common pattern of color on the backs of corgis is referred to as a fairy sack. There are special dog breeders in Calvin who impress with the loyalty and agility of fairy mounts. Uh, Dog-like creatures of the first world commonly used by mounts by other fae, and breed the corgis specifically to resemble these mounts. So there is influence by the sprites. Now we have to talk about types of sprites. So, yeah. This will be a little complex, because I will go over the ones that are from the ancestry. Heritage is from that one. And then we'll kind of talk about some other ones here. So, this fellow here is an Atomi. Um, just to give them their diminutive fey, resembling humanoid beings, pointed ears, insectile wings. Just keeping them in mind, they're one group. Other groups are the Draxi, Grig, Meli, Nykerta, Pixie, um, the Luminous Sprite as an ancestry. Um, we have updates in the Monster Core for just mild ones for the Draxi, um, the Aether Sprites might replace the Luminous? I'm not sure. Or they might be something new. Grig, uh, Melixi, Nycterra, and Pixies. So there's some of the ancestries that we don't really hear about yet, but we might not. Um, Draxi are kind of dragon-like uh, sprites. Aether ones prefer the Aether courts to frolic and drink in other empora comedy. Griggs are musicians. They're very insectile. Um, kind of a clicker like lower torso. Uh, the Melixi are also insect spe spirits, but they're hyperactive with sweet toots, um, with insectile like wings, common among wing fae. Uh, the ant and antennae of an ant and other insect like features. Uh, the Nectera were bat sprites. They're affectionate to nature, incredibly uh, hospitable, and have bat-like features. And the pixies are, well, small-sized rather than tiny-sized. They're wanderers and tricksters who use pixie dust to create uh, comical situations. And they're archers. And they're a little bit larger than your average one. And then, of course, you just have your average sprite, sometimes common sprites or firefly sprites, which are the primeval guardians. You know, maybe the firefight spikes are supposed to be the um, luminous spray. I'm not sure on that one. Again, it's sort of combining the monster core stuff with the old um, ancestry guide information. And it makes it a little bit kind of a hard comparison, along with basically the uh, Atomi is an old, older sprite type that we don't have an lot about. Not as much updated when it comes to these two groups here. So, yeah. It was discussed in Bestiary 3 last time. So. But, there you go. They're Sprite. And I said about this that I was pretty sure we're not going to necessarily worry about major changes for the Ancestry particular. Because, again, other than maybe a ch name change to something like the Luminous Sprite... As of the Monster Core, the rest of those sprite ancestries still exist. They're still there. They're still part of sprites. And otherwise, you know, small changes in the way that, again, it's... You have to look into how the Remaster Project updated ancestries to know how the legacy sprite would be updated mechanically. But societally, idea-wise, there really isn't much difference. It's still the same sprite that it was. Yeah, the stats of it that you might face as an NPC, that you might get into trouble with or you might not, that's a little different. It's got new Monster Force stats. 
put as a being you're going to deal with, that's kind of where it fills into this interesting position where, yeah, I don't know what is going to majorly be different society-wise at all. I couldn't really find anything that screamed there would be major changes to the lore of the sprites, and that's why I... It took me a while to think about this of whether I wanted to do the video. Really, kind of breaking it down when I was kind of researching it, that's what I got into. But the sprites are interesting enough, as you can see, there are plenty of fey from the first world. Gnomes are similar. Fey, though, the sprites, though, sprites are different than gnomes in a lot of ways, because they, in a lot of ways, still remain connected to the first world, while the gnomes of Galarian do not have that same connection anymore. So it's really interesting to see there are two groups of Fae that both immigrated from the first world and have major changes in the way that they work, but both changed differently. Maybe it's because sprites are so attracted and connected to magic, much more so than perhaps gnomes were when they immigrated, that sprites have been able to use that magic to evolve themselves in a different direction on the material plane when it comes to the ancestors we'll talk about. The wingless, those that are the heroes or characters of the sprite society, those that are different than them, those that are the children of these immigrants. And the fact is that unlike gnomes, which don't really go back to the first world usually, sprites tend to. Another major factor about them, they tend to go back and forth a lot more. These things combine together to create this interesting situation where you have these two groups that have some similarities in origin, but very different in the way that they evolved and changed. And I think it's also that there's this interesting variety in sprites that is different than a lot of other ancestries, because each type of sprite is still a sprite, but they are vastly different. Some look like dragons or bats, lower part, of a, lower part of a cricket, more insect-like creatures on their top, some that are just little fairy creatures that would be recognizable, the soft smiles of a halfling, or no. These are differences that make sprites such a versatile and interesting heritage to talk about, an ancestry that's very interesting to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed learning about them and diving in with me with a group that is in another weird position with the legacy content and the remaster project of, and we're probably not getting a lot of changes, but there's maybe small details here and there. Still, worthy enough to talk about. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Remember, come join me and check out all my other stuff I do. If you're going to join me live over on Twitch. It's Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Thursdays is the Pathfinder Day, where I do all my Pathfinder topics. I record it. I throw it to YouTube a few days later. If you are over on YouTube checking this out, remember to give the support to the channel. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. All the, all the stuff that feeds the algorithm. And like, leave a comment. All that kind of great stuff. Really helps out over there. Even if you can't join me live, that's a good enough help for me. So please, just, you know, whatever you can do to help support the channel. Keep me making these things. Keep improving these things. Because I'm hoping to keep continually improving these videos, the quality of them, and stuff like that plans for it, but it's going to take, you know, support and people enjoying this stuff for me to get to the points where I can improve stuff, you know? I need to know that people are in it for, for me, you know, improving sound and settings and the way I do them a little bit, you know, improve the nature of it. Anyway, um, I do social media, uh, Discord, Twitter.com, slash X, uh, you can check those out, link below, and, uh, yeah, uh, other tabletop stuff. Wednesdays, 9 p.m., Crimson Queen, Pathfinder First Edition uh, 1E. We're playing it. Uh, we're doing a version of the Crimson Queen. Or, I'm sorry, the Crimson Throne, uh, called the Crimson Queen. Recommend checking that out. Really fun game. A lot of good people. Also goes up on YouTube and discussing tabletop Saturdays at 6. A talk show slash podcast where we do news of the week. All right, I'm going to get going. I'm going to go hang out with Twitch, maybe do a couple more stuff uh, over there. And uh, until the next time we talk about Pathfinder ancestors or anything else, I bid you all adieu and wonderful farewell.